Hello to all of my Disney friends out there. Today is a very special video because we are going to be talking about my like absolute favorite thing in all of Walt Disney World, which is Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. The Halloween party is starting in just a few weeks. It is starting August 17th. Can you believe that? We're just pushing Halloween up further and further, earlier and earlier each year. So I'm so excited to share some of my tips and some of the things that I have picked up over the last five years of what to do for this Halloween party. It is a separate ticketed event. So even if you are an annual pass holder, you do have to pay extra, but you do get a discount. That is the plus. But to me, this is 100% worth it. If you are debating whether or not to go, yes, go. You will have an amazing time. I love this event so much. I would do it for the rest of my life if I could. Maybe I'll be able to. <laughs> I had made a sort of a quick list of tips and things that you should do during the Halloween party. So I have 10 tips or ideas for you guys who are attending Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Let's get into the video. Okay guys, so my first tip is that the Halloween party technically starts at 7 p.m. So your ticket is going to say 7 p.m. Everything is gonna say 7 p.m. But what they don't tell you is that you can get into the park at four o'clock. Even with your, your special ticket, you are allowed in at four o'clock for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. But that for sure is my number one tip. Just be there so that you can get in at four o'clock. There's a line that builds up uh, at around four o'clock. So just try and get there a little bit earlier, even quarter to four could work. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get from your resort or wherever you're staying to the Magic Kingdom, so keep that in mind as well. My second tip is not one that I think a lot of people know. It is that you guys can actually make fast passes during your Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party, even though they do not have fast passes during the actual party. So if you get there at four o'clock, you can have fast passes up until six o'clock. So generally what I do when I make my plans for the party, I set it up so I have a fast pass from like 3.30 to 4.30 and so then when I get into the park, I can immediately go to that fast pass. Then you're allowed to have one from 4.30 to 5.30 and then you can have one from 5.30 to 6 because they end at 6 o'clock. So even though you are only going in to the park for the Halloween party, you can actually use fast passes during those hours that you are in the park during normal, normal park hours. So like from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, you can make fast passes. So we can try and cram in all the rides that we want to do before the actual party starts at 7 because we want to take full advantage of all the events that are going on during the Halloween party. This third one is not necessarily a tip, but more of just a, um, a guide for some people. And a lot of people ask if adults can dress up, and the answer is yes. Adults can dress up. There are a little bit more of restrictions for your costume, like no masks. You can't have floor length dresses, anything that goes below your knees in terms of like a cape, but you can still have so much fun dressing up. I dress up every time I go. Most people dress up. So if you are considering going, please dress up. It makes it 10 times more fun, especially if you dress up as a character that you can meet that character in the park and it's just, it's so much fun. Two years ago, I was Daisy De La Cruz or the tightrope walker from the stretching portraits in the Haunted Mansion or a foreshadowing of one of my later tips is that uh, Madame Carlotta, uh, who was one of the ghosts at the Haunted Mansion, she just went through all the characters in the stretching room's history and it was amazing. Just because I was dressed up there, the interaction with the cast members, with the characters, 
You cannot get any better interaction with the characters than you can at the Halloween party. So my next tip is for people who may or may not have allergies or they have children that have allergies to like peanuts, dairy, uh, gluten, etc. They have been giving out allergy tokens. I don't know if this will change in the future, um, this upcoming year, but last year they gave out tokens. Have a special bag, and when you go trick-or-treating, you will get special tokens from the cast members, and at the end of the night, you go to the city hall and you sort of exchange your tokens for candy that works for your or your child's allergy. You have really good candy there. I mean, like, high-quality candy, so, uh, for you people who like candy, I know my friend Cargo does. <laughs> if you have allergies, please head over there to City Hall and you can even talk to a cast member about it. Just so that your child or you, if you want to go trick or treating, um, you don't feel left out and you still get free candy. It's amazing. People walk out with like pounds and pounds and pounds of candy. <laughs> So if you guys are interested in meeting some of the more popular characters like Jack and Sally or the Seven Dwarves, you can line up before the party starts because they have been, for the last two years I think, um, they have been meeting a little bit earlier than when the party starts. So I remember Jack and Sally starting their meet and greets at 5 o'clock. So the party starts at 7 and their meet and greet was starting at 5. And I remember years where they would only come out at 7 and people would be in line for hours. And I mean, people are still in line for hours, but like three hours. And their whole party was just like, poof, it's gone, you know? 7 to 10, that's, that's most of the party just waiting to meet these characters. So Jack and Sally have started meeting at 5 o'clock. Last year and the year before, they were in Liberty Square, so hopefully they will still be in that spot where Tiana used to meet. It's sort of behind the Christmas shop. And then the Seven Dwarves have also started meeting, I think somewhere in between 6.15 and 6.30, they meet in back of Storybook Circus, or at least they have the last two years. I hope that they don't change any of the character locations. Those are really the two big character meet and greets during the Halloween party. So you guys can get in early for those, get those meet and greets out of the way, and then just enjoy the rest of your party. So my sixth tip is that uh, there are two parades. So the Boot to You Parade. But my observation is that little kids get very, very tired right around when the fireworks start. So after Hubble Wishes ends, this like huge mass of people just start to exit the Magic Kingdom. And that is when you want to see the parade. You want to see the second parade. It will save you lots of time earlier on and it will be less crowded for you. So another thing I think people sort of get confused about a little bit when they think about the Halloween party are the attractions. So most of the attractions are open during Mickey Snowsell's Carrie Halloween party. There are a few that are, will be closed during the party, but the big ones like Seven Dwarves, Space Mountain, um, the Haunted Mansion, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Peter Pan, all of these rides will be open during the Halloween party. And compared to a normal park day, there is limited admission to these Halloween parties. So if the party sells out, it is still much less crowded than a normal Magic Kingdom day. The lines, for the most part, I don't know, maybe besides the Mine Train or some of the more popular rides, I think my family and I, we just walked on to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin like five times in a row. We just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it because there was literally no wait. Like no one was there. A lot of the rides are walk-ons. They use some of the attractions, like say the Enchanted Tiki Room or last year they used Mickey's Philhar Magic as sort of treat stations and you were able to sit down in the air conditioning so you could stay cool. And in Mickey's Philhar Magic, they had some old cartoons playing with the animation. Most of the rides will be open. They will have very short lines. You will most likely walk on to many of them and some of the more busy attractions like Seven Dwarves, it will probably be about a 30 minute wait compared to some of the other times during the day where it gets up to like 180 minutes. So that is a huge plus for you guys. 
My number eight thing on my list is sort of a must do for me. If you guys have never been to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, you need to ride the Haunted Mansion. And I'm not just saying this because the Haunted Mansion is my favorite attraction in all of Walt Disney World, but the Haunted Mansion is so, so special during Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. The cast members are extra spooky at night. They do their makeup, they have like cobwebs all over them, and it's just such a fun experience. And then you also see some more characters. While going in or out of the ride, you may see Madame Carlotta or Madame Renata. And then last year they incorporated a butler and it was so funny. They are so, so witty. They are so fast when it comes to their jokes. And if you guys don't know who they are, they are ghosts of the Haunted Mansion that come out to hang out with some of the guests at the Halloween party. And you can get a picture with her, um, like Madame Carlotta or Madame Renata. I have seen people get pictures with the butler. It is a must do. The Haunted Mansion and seeing the ghosts of the Haunted Mansion, they are so, so funny and they make the party so worth it. So my number nine one on my list is talking about special magic shots that they have at the Halloween party. One of our episodes of Disney Fiasco, which is on one of my partner channels, Disney Dan, uh, we were talking about our favorite photo ops in the park and I mentioned this one from the Halloween party where I was holding a poison apple above a bubbling cauldron and it was right in front of the castle. And those are shots that you could only get at the Halloween party. My second favorite shot is definitely the headless horseman in the front of the train station. So as you are coming out of Magic Kingdom, just stop there for a second. It is a part of PhotoPass if you have purchased the PhotoPass bundle or if you are an annual pass holder. So just consider that. You guys can also just buy like one of the digital prints. So it is so cool, the magic shot. It's one of my favorite pictures we have ever taken. It is a must do shot. They also have special pictures with the hitchhiking ghosts. So if you wanna do a uh, thumbs up picture with Phineas, Ezra, and Gus, go ahead. They have amazing new pictures of the Haunted Mansion that I saw last year. So just ask cast members what your new photo pass pictures might be. So my final sort of tip is to wait to trick or treat. So in the beginning, the lines are so long, like longer than the attractions to go trick or treating. And in addition to this, like a double tip is to bring your own bag because the bags that they provide you, and yes, they do provide you with a bag and like a starter candy set, they don't fit very much candy. So bring your own bag, bring those little pumpkins, or if you guys have canvas bags or pillow sacks that you could bring, I'm sure you can even take the ones from the hotel room. It's usually hard to keep that much candy in the bags that they provide you and they fall apart and they're pretty small, so bonus tip. But the lines get much, much shorter, as I mentioned, after the fireworks end. So if you can wait to trick or treat, there are much shorter lines, and then as you get towards the end of the night, the cast members just start to give you piles and piles of candy. So if you can stick it out, I know people who have smaller children, it is really hard to stay that late. Um, the party does go until midnight, so if you can, if it is a possibility, try and wait to trick or treat until the end of the night. You generally wait a lot less, and you definitely get more candy. <laughs> So guys, those were some of my top 10 tips or ideas for you guys for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I know a lot of people were asking me to make this video and I definitely have a lot more tips. I just didn't want this video to be like an hour long because let's be honest, I could definitely make this like an hour long video because I am so passionate about Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. But if you guys are considering going, please go. It is an amazing event. If you do go and you're an adult, dress up, have your kids dress up, bring your own candy bags. It is so much fun. And if you guys have any more questions, please leave them in the comments down below or I could make another video if you guys are interested. But if you guys have any specific questions, just let me know. You can reach out to me, my Instagram, is 
Mickey's Magic 28. My Twitter is Mickey's Magic 28. And if you guys are interested in some of my ears, uh, my <laughs> Etsy store is also Mickey's Magic 28. Thank you so much guys for watching. Have a spooky day. <laughs> See you real soon guys.